moments of the hour today. We are joined by Gerald Salente. We'll also continue with some of the phone callers that are already on hold because Gerald uh, can speak about any issue. He's a very well-researched, best-selling author. I uh, worked as a consultant, uh, worked in uh, political circles as well. I really need no introduction here. Trendsresearch.com. Uh, Gerald is an American trends forecaster, publisher of Trends Journal, business consultant and author who makes predictions about global financial markets and other events of historical importance. Salente has described himself as a political atheist and a citizen of the world. And he's appeared basically on everything uh, uh, under the sun. And he is uh, a uh, regular guest with us, something we really appreciate. And his quarterly trends journal and his daily and weekly trends updates are invaluable. Everyone should also support real media and real analysis and go and become subscribers and then uh, hand off the great color magazine uh, to folks that you know. It's got the great art of uh, Anthony Frieda in it. He's also got Dr. Paul Craig Roberts uh, writing with him. Roberts has pointed out recently that um, so is USA Today of all people of all outfits, that all the, the, the Israeli government didn't defend our Second Amendment and said, we don't have armed teachers. No, you shouldn't have guns. When we pay to arm the teachers in Israel, that's on record they do, uh, the Russian media has come out and said we should not have our guns and they attack me. Uh, we've had the Chinese government come out through their media and say we shouldn't have guns and quote, there should be a war against gun owners, Pierce Morgan. Uh, all this media, the BBC, Australian news, it's despicable. Uh, that all these authoritarian systems want our guns. And I wanted to talk to Gerald about this first because I want to get his take and his view on it. Then we'll get into his latest uh, forecasting and fine-tuning because so much of what he said is coming true like clockwork. What what he sees unfolding now in 2013 to 2014 uh, as the economy continues to deteriorate, they've announced in states all over the country federally funded local police checkpoints looking for criminals and, and gangs. And they search for guns while they're at it, legal guns. They drag you out of your car and take photos of your tattoos. That's mainstream news in Texas. Uh, we're going into a deeper level of incremental martial law. And is that happening because the hammer is about to drop financially? Uh, it, it's all accelerating, basically. And Gerald Salente joins us to be able to speak about this. Gerald. Uh, a lot's happened since you were on three or four weeks ago, my friend. Good to have you on. Oh, thanks for having me, and Happy New Year to you and everyone. You too. Uh, what is your take on the shooting there in Connecticut, very close to you, and uh, how they're publishing names of gun owners so we can be robbed uh, and so we can be demonized, how they're saying all gun owners are racist Klan members? These are quotes. It looks like they really are coming after us. Yeah, they are. And um, and it's what you said before. Matter of fact, you know, we, we, we're finishing up the winter edition of the Trends Journal and we go into all the laws and restrictions that are putting they're putting out there to to control us. And it is because, to use your phrase, the hammer is falling. And on the gun control issue, let's play this back. When did we first start seeing these kind of uncontrollable lunatics losing their minds in mass killings of people. I mentioned that when I was a young man, I remember this, um, this movie, a young kid actually, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. And this guy killed like, you know, four people or something in a, in a farm village in Iowa or someplace. And he was whacked out on aspirin. When you look and see when this mass murder trend began, it began with the issuance, it's all there, you could look at the data, it began with the issuance of these psychotropic drugs. And as you follow what went on in Newtown, there's very little talk, if anything, about what this kid was whacked out on. And they're saying that he was suffering from Asperger's disease or syndrome, and consequently, it is assumed that he was on psychotropic drugs. And they're keeping that sealed because in every case it keeps coming out, the shooters were on all sorts of these drugs that in the insert says causes you to kill people and kill yourself. Just like our militaries at record suicides, they give them suicide pills. I mean, what do you expect is gonna happen? Not only that, when you look at the latest data coming out, on how much money the military is spending on these drugs 
and prescription drugs. It's absurd. It's obscene. And again, you don't even have to read the label of Zoloft or Ritalin or Prozac. Just tune in to any TV station and listen to the ads from the prescription drugs that they're selling. And after they show the person romping through the fields and bluebirds flying everywhere and how great life is, and they go through what the side effects of these drugs are, you'll hear suicide come up, you know, more frequently than not. So it's not an issue of gun control. It's an issue of drug control. And it's not an issue of, you know, marijuana. It's an issue of the pharmaceutical industry that are killing the brains of the nation. And then when we look at the other issue, and I hear all these politicians come out, the Dianne Feinsteins, the not-so-Feinsteins, the Obamas, all of them, one after another, saying what we have to do to stop this cycle of violence. I got an idea. Why don't we start at the top? You want to talk about murder? Hey, you blow some people off in a school. How about wiping out entire villages? I got one for you. You want to talk about a cycle of violence? How about that wonderful war that you senators and you congressmen voted to send our people to to go kill other people by the millions? You want to talk about a cycle of violence? Hey, let's wait for Tuesday. Yeah, Terror Tuesday. You know that day when Obama signs off on what drones to send over to foreign countries? and kill people oh and the wives and the kids around them just call them collateral damage it's a culture of cruelty why shouldn't people do this they see it coming from the top and the fish rots from the head down and i want to mention about what happened over here with this newspaper in rockland county not far from us this is beautiful this is great. You want to talk about imbeciles and cowards? The editor of this, the publisher of that newspaper, a coward, a little slimy piece of crap publishing people's names that have guns. And why am I calling her a slimy little piece of crap? Because right here in the toilet paper of record, Newspaper that put gun permit map online hires armed guards. Check that out for hypocrisy. Oh, no, you can't arm yourself, you little weenie, disgusting individual. You need somebody to protect you. You need an armed guard. I got an armed guard for you. Check this line out. The safety of my staff is my top priority, Miss Hansen said in a telephone interview. Guess what? The safety of my staff is their own priority. If you can't stand up for your life, you don't deserve to have it. If you're going to call somebody out and start a fight. And that's what these people do. They start a fight and then they call on gods in because they don't have the courage, the dignity, and the respect to defend themselves. Gerald, I've studied a lot of history, so have you, because to know what's going to happen currently in the future, you have to know history. The hypocrisy of the so-called liberals, these are not liberals. It's not that the conservatives are good either, the mainline ones, they're authoritarians too, but this group of Obamanoids, they've all got bodyguards, they've all got concealed carries, Diane Feinstein admits it, but then she says, Mr. and Mrs. America, this is a quote, I'm going to make you turn all your guns in. I'm sure you've seen that video. It's crazy. It's like, they're going to have guns, but then say we're trash and publish where we live, because they're doing this all over the country, with government lists of concealed carry people. I mean, and, and, and this has been done before, and people get robbed, and I hope they get sued for doing this, because this is harassment. This is a terroristic action.
I mean, I mean, what? they are the scum of the earth. They've got armed guards, Gerald, but they'll publish that you've got guns. Yeah, I know. I mean, who's, who's making this crap up, an armed guard? Why can't you arm yourself? You got to hire somebody? And what, yeah, what, what kind of, who made this crap up? And then they brag about it. We hired armed guards. Doesn't anybody see the disconnect They are here? pathetic, disgusting jellyfish. And again, up top, they want our guns to enslave us. But the general liberal is really a chicken neck who's never been in a... I walk on the hike and bike trail, and I could tell who real liberals are, uh, who, who love liberty. They're outgoing. But the fake liberals are literally scared chicken necks of everything. They are scared of their own shadows, and so they want us to live like disarmed slaves like they do. All right, now let's put this all into perspective to make it real at another level. Let's suppose they pass gun control. How effective is it going to be with some 300 million guns out there? Who's going to have the guns? I'll tell you how effective it's going to be. It's going to be as effective as prohibition was. I'll tell you how effective it's going to be. It's going to be as effective as the war on drugs. Who can, what are they going to do? They're not going to be able to control this. I'll tell you how effective it is in countries like Brazil and other places where it's almost impossible to get guns. You know who has the guns? The criminals. And they're running loose. Insider billionaire investors like George Soros and John Paulson have recently made massive moves into gold, purchasing what Bloomberg News described as gold hoards. Soros alone doubled his holdings in a single day. Russia's Vladimir Putin has doubled down on gold, increasing the country's holdings by over 100%. With $1.8 trillion under management, the bond king Bill Gross, the world's preeminent bond fund manager at PIMCO, has warned investors of the dangers of QE3 and inflation. And what's he betting on? You guessed it, gold. Friends, this is Alex Jones for MidasResources.com. For more than 15 years, I have exclusively used Midas Resources for all my precious metal needs. Whether it's bullion or collectibles you're looking for, Midas Resources is simply the best. I own my gold as a hedge against inflation. This Federal Reserve fiat currency could go the way of the Deutschmark and the Weimar Republic anytime. In these historically dangerous times, it makes sense to physically hold gold and silver. Midas already has some of the best deals in the industry. But if you give them a call and mention the radio special, they will give you a list of the day's super specials. Midas brokers are standing by to answer all your questions at 800-686-2237. They also have a lot of informative free literature explaining the opportunities and risk of holding precious metals. They are ready to answer your questions at 800-686-2237. Again, that's 800-686-2237. Gerald Salente is our guest. Uh, Gerald, I want to get back to the point you were making about crime rates exploding in Chicago, New York, everywhere they take the people's arms. I mean, it's common sense. This idea of let's don't arm the pilots. They can be trusted to fly the plane, but let's literally get a $20 an hour security guard who's had a couple of firearms classes that anybody could take, and let's have them come guard us. Or... Let's put federal air marshals on all the planes to spy on everybody instead of our, I mean, it's this idea that only government specialists can do it. It's all about a government monopoly. But doesn't the power structure, I want to get back into the point you were making, but then I want to ask you this central question. We can see where this is going. You've talked about it. You've wrote about it. History, we've seen it. Yeah, they may get half the public to want to turn their guns in and half the public to suck their thumbs and think government really cares about them and maybe the government can come and wipe their hind ends. But a lot of us... 10, 15, 20, 30 percent know what's going on. We're not going to go along. We're done. So they can't put us all in prison. I mean, does the, the system obviously knows it's going to cause a civil war if Obama signs an executive order to try to confiscate guns. Gerald Salente. Yeah, well, yeah, they're going to try something. I, I don't believe they're going to go that far with it because I think they know that they're not going to get away with it. And we even saw in, what was it, in Illinois, they tried passing some legislation yes. I saw on your website, on, on the Prison Planet website. Yes, we shot you, it down. Following it. Yes. And, and, they didn't get it, and they didn't pass it. I, I think what they're going to do is they'll come up with some other kind of restriction, and uh, it'll only go so far. They'll keep playing out this political capital for as much as they can get from it. But in the end, I don't think they're going to succeed. 
There will be more restrictions guaranteed. And again, the stupidity. For example, there was just a guy in Switzerland that killed three people or four people the other day. Everybody, everybody in Switzerland is allowed to have a gun. They all have guns. They're not killing each other. This has nothing to do with having the gun. It has to do with a society that's out of control, a society that's over-medicated. And again, let's stay on that issue for just a moment. Now, you've been following this closer than anybody that I know. And you're, you're looking at every piece of information coming out. What drugs was this kid on? Why do we have to hear from some police uh, superintendent or inspector or whoever say, we have the information, but we're keeping it private because we don't want you to know anything. I mean, who can make this? Why, what, what's wrong? We can't. Why don't we know? Why aren't the books open? Why can't we say what drug tipped this kid out of his mind? Hey, all of those wankers out there that have been screaming about marijuana over all the years and how it could become a gateway drug and lead to worse things. Why aren't you screaming out against all of these psychotropic drugs that they're pumping into all of these kids? And now it's getting even worse. Here's what's going on. A kid grows up in a family of which there are tens of millions in this country. His mother's whacked out on meth. He doesn't know who his father is. He's living in this drama, this, this, this situation that's hell every day. He goes to school. Oh, he becomes unruly. So what do they do? Well, there are no social programs anymore. When I was a kid, there were CYOs, there were PBA, P, uh, PALs, political, uh, police athletic leagues, there were YMCAs. You know, the kids had a place to go. If things were uneasy, you had a little support, the churches, whatever. Now you're on your own. You know what they're doing to these kids? They're feeding them drugs to calm them down. That's right. Millions and millions of kids getting drugged up by Big Pharma. Their minds are being blown. So for this, they say we need gun control. And as I said, if we're going to have gun control, start with Obama. Start with Bush. Start with Clinton. Bombs away over everybody. Kill millions. But take the guns away from people because they could become dangerous. Oh, but wait a minute, Gerald. Obama fake cried and, 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 and couldn't squeeze tears out and now has released another fake photo of him sad over the dead children, just like the fake situation room photo they had to admit. I mean, the, the milking of this, he isn't crying over the hundreds of dead Mexican kids from Fast and Furious, is he? Now, how about, how about the million people the United States killed in Iraq? How about the ongoing slaughter in Afghanistan? Just yesterday, another Predator drone killed a military. It ain't other people that happened to be around them. I bet Obama cried over that. He signed the death order. We'll be right back with Gerald Salente. While we fight to retain our liberty, while we fight to expose globalism, we have to realize we're talking about a very powerful combination of power. Renowned author and expert Joel Skousen breaks down the globalist plan to shut down America and stage a new world war. In one day, America will go from day to night. And if you haven't prepared in advance, there's not enough time to prepare in 24 hours, even if you saw it that early. Coming to the Info War in November is our new documentary film presentation. Strategic relocation is a systematic way to think strategically in the future about how do I safeguard. Joel Skousen, Strategic Relocation. The freeways are going to be crowded, they're going to run out of gasoline, they're going to run out of food, and then they're going to start to go north and south of those freeways. Joel Skousen is renowned as one of the world's foremost experts in strategic relocation and the securing of your home. We talk about natural disasters, the health environment, we talk about pollution, the water quality. 
with my personal experience about being in every one of these states. Government is digging in for the organized incremental collapse of society and world war. The U.S. isn't building huge underground bases and bunkers because of some terrorist threat. They know that a massive nuclear attack is coming. They want that attack to come. Most people won't even be ready and won't be able to get out of town when any of these nuclear weapons fall because there'll be absolute panic. There is no preparedness without strategy. What I tell people uh, is that you do have time. Prepare wisely in advance. This Christmas, give the gift of preparedness. Strategic Relocation, the film, with Joel Skousen and Alex Jones. Infowars.com. Police kicked out of Belleville Denny's. Am I pronouncing that right? For being armed, CBS News. I saw that this morning. It just blew me away. And the newscast acts like it's kind of reasonable. So the anti gunners, the rank and file, are so scared of guns that now they're even scared with police with guns. Actually, we have that clip of the. Uh, of the DEA guy shooting himself. Maybe we should play that brief clip for uh, Gerald here if we can find it. But the issue here is if you're going to trust police with guns, you got to trust firefighters with guns. I think they should have them as backup when they get shot at sometimes during riots. You should trust the citizens with guns. You should have the pilots with guns. The answer is arm good people. Okay? And that's been known throughout history. And the areas that have the highest crime are the areas where they've taken the guns. But here it is, police kicked out of Denny's for being armed. The police chief, uh, Bill Clay, and by the way, we have a police chief coming on the Sunday show um, who's calling for a Second Amendment zone. He says he's going to nullify all the federal laws. People say, well, you can't do that. Oh, really? You've got 800 plus cities that nullify the illegal alien laws that are actually constitutional. How about we nullify laws that are unconstitutional? The new orders come after a New Year's Day clash between five detectives and one Denny's manager. The department says the detectives were out of uniform but were wearing their badges when manager David Rice asked them to either leave or put their guns in the vehicle. And of course they argued with them but left. Rice told detectives that one of their weapons, specifically a female detective's gun, was making another diner feel uncomfortable. As the uh, officers were leaving without their food, general manager Michael Van walked up and corrected the manager and said it was fine for them to stay. But officers said it would be too awkward. And I found a find this must be another article. I had another one here in my stack where the police chief called it crazy politics. I wanted his, his full quote. Uh, yeah, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, I had a carpet cleaner guy. I've told this story a hundred times. So I'm not going to keep Gerald on holding longer, but I want his take on this. I had the carpet cleaner there and and... Um, my, my girlfriend lived with me. We got married. It's, it's my wife. Uh, very, very evil, but we were about to get married. She, she just moved in. And um, we're getting the house, little house, your carpet cleaned, and my studio, and there's a, didn't have any kids yet, but there was a shotgun up on the, you know, up on the, in a 243 and some stuff. And the guy said, I can't clean in there. Well, and the assistant was from Texas. And he goes, no, man, guns, the guns are legal here. The guy goes, no, no, and he leaves. And I had to call him and go, well, we've stopped him calling the police, but yes, He's not comfortable, we'll send another crew. And I'm like, you know what, just forget it. But this is the attitude where these people think guns come out at night and kill people. And, and here's another headline. Boston Mayor, Vice President guaranteed gun control before Sandy Hook shooting. Leading gun control advocate, we'll get it done by the end of January. I told you, they plan with even an executive order. Uh, the head of Gunners of America says they may actually try it. Gerald Salente, what is your take on the citizens so scared now that they call the police when they see a gun in your gun rack uh, or they see a gun in your gun case or police now are having people freak out when they've got guns. Well, it's fear and hysteria. Look what happened down in Maryland the other day. The little kid, six years old, went, you know, pow, 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 and, and they, they threw him out of school. I said, good thing the kid didn't go bang, bang, bang. They would have the SWAT teams in there shooting them. Now the country's lost its mind. I mean, look at every level it's breaking down. I mean, you, we, there's this whole thing of it's fear and hysteria. Look what they did with the fiscal cliff. Pick the category. How they had the people freaked out since Election Day. 
you know, going, I mean, it's still going on. So you have a society that's lost its dignity, its respect, its courage, its passion, and they're, and they, and they're, living, they're living unfulfilled lives. So when you live these unfulfilled lives and have nothing going for you, you start making life miserable, miserable for other people around you. And again, this gun issue to me is more of a prescription drug issue. And people refuse to hold on to it. And they keep avoiding the fact. And the fact is that all of these drugs make a lot of people that are already over the edge, pushing them even further. And it's well documented and well known. Well, Gerald, I want to get into the economy and some issues and then take some wild card phone calls, questions for you here. But look, in the 1980 study of Prozac, they admitted a 14 or was it 15 time increase in suicide. That's mainstream news. Uh, a decade ago, we finally forced all serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs or SRIs to put in there that it causes mania, schizophrenia, mass murder, violence, suicide. I mean, it's all in these drugs insert. And in almost every shooting, they try to suppress it, but it always comes out later they were on it. Like this time, that you know, he was under psychiatric care. Give me a break. He's on it. It says when you have Asperger's, they try to put you on. Prozac is actually the one they recommend, one of the oldest. So we know these pills do it, and then we always wonder, it's always a goth, devil worshiper, obsessed with shoot 'em up video games, who is literally taking hallucinogenic drugs, who does this. It's open and shut. It's the drugs. Why do I have to lose my guns because mommy likes to jack her kid up on a bunch of drugs instead of giving them a spanking or making them carry out the trash? I mean, why can't we have discipline for these kids? Again, you, you nailed it. And that's what I'm saying. So the, so the discussion starts to lose its focus because it keeps going into all these different areas. Again, for me, the two areas are very simple. One is drugs, and the other is a culture of cruelty. We have presidents that get out there and brag how they kill people. Hey, Obama got Osama. Hey, wasn't that great? Hillary bragged about, about Gaddafi. She goes, I came, I saw, he died. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so it's a culture of violence and it's a, and it's a culture of prescription drug addicted society. Where do you predict it's going to go? And then let's shift into your latest trends and what's really front and center in the New Trends Journal. Everybody's got to go to the site with all the videos and the material, trendsresearch.com. I, I stop there daily, trendsresearch.com. People can go there and subscribe and support what Gerald's doing, but really get the magazine, the, the, the journal, so you can then give it to others. This is the type of thing you want to leave at the dental office. This is the type of thing you want to pay forward. Uh, again, Trends Journal, ladies and gentlemen, available at trendsresearch.com or trendsjournal.com. What else do you see on the radar? What else is front and center? Our front and center war. And, and it, we, they're leading us to it. Remember, you've heard me say this before. We're watching a parallel universe happen. The crash of 1929, the Great Depression, currency war, wars, trade wars, world war, the panic of 08, the Great Depression. There's a depression going on in a lot of countries worldwide, including here. If you're out of work and you're starving and things are terrible, it's a depression and there are a lot of people in it. Currency wars. Last year we heard Guido Montega, and this year from Brazil saying there's a currency war. We just heard Mervyn King, the outgoing head of the Bank of England in New York. There's a currency war going on. Now we have a new prime minister of Japan, Abe. There's a currency war. What's the first thing he did when he got elected? He told the Bank of Japan, do what they're doing in the United States. Do what they're doing in Europe. Do what they're doing in China. Do what they're doing all over the world. Print more money. Devalue the currency because there's a war on and the war is for exports. If your currency is too strong, your manufacturers can't push product out of the country. So Japan, do like they've done in the USA. 
devalue the currency so that their exporters could export more. Stage next, trade wars. They're heating up and world war. And anybody out there that doesn't believe that the United States currency has been devalued, well, take a look at gold prices from where they are now and where they were 10 years ago. So what is going on? For the, our forecast is economics, more of the same but worse. They're going to continue to print money. That's the only way that they're keeping this going. And by doing so, keeping interest rates at or near zero, which they are coming out of the Fed. So the banks are getting all the dough that they can. And then you put the other piece on top. Low interest rates, okay. The housing market's in its worst decline since the Great Depression. What's holding it up? Oh, you can get, you know, you can get a, a loan now for what? On residential, 2.77%. So now we can see how they keep, oh, and by the way, on that new fiscal cliff deal, they extended the mortgage tax deductions. So that is a $600 billion cost that helps the mortgage investment. That's right. They didn't do that to help mom and pop. They did that to help the banksters, again, who loan this out of nothing. And, and what's amazing is Obama's saying no new payroll taxes. He swore it, but 77% of American workers got that tax increase, and he raised a bunch of other taxes. That's exactly right. So this keeping this mortgage deduction in there, that helps the mortgage business. That's all that was for. So, and it's guaranteed. Is, I mean, who makes this thing up? I'll be a bank. I'll loan you money to buy a house. You, you default on the loan. Okay, don't worry about it. the FHA, Freddie Mac, and Fannie Mae. We'll cover the bet that the bank made that they made a bad bet, and they get to take your house and then resell it. Anyway, moving back to the war, because it's all connected. When all else fails, they take you to war. And they're going to take us to war, I believe, with Syria. And that is the gateway to go into Iran. So when I talk about the first great war, do the math. There's a war in Libya. There's a war in Syria. There's a war that's heating up again, a revolution in Egypt. The Muslim Brotherhood took over, which, by the way, had nothing, nothing to do with the so-called Arab Spring. They were not on the streets. Same thing in Tunisia. After they overthrew that government, whoop, here's the Muslim Brotherhood. Oh, and by the way, take, over, take a trip over to Yemen. Not far away. A civil war going on there, a corrupt government that we, the American taxpayer, are supporting, and... President Obama is sending in predator drones. Check out Bahrain, not too far. A civil war going on, but don't say anything about, bad about Bahrain because the United States has the fifth fleet there. Hey, it oh, came hey. out that Bahrain actually pays money and others to CNN for fake reports. The whistle got blew by Amber Lyon, who's won three uh, Emmys for her news reporting. And it never even became a news issue that CNN isn't just connected to the Pentagon and PSYOPs has came out 12 years ago. They're actually foreign funded. Of course they are. Look what's going on. What just happened with with Al Gore just selling his current TV. Who did he sell it to? Al Jazeera. Who owns Al Jazeera? Hey, it couldn't be to cut a government, could it? Qatar, you know, yeah. And... and Wow. And, and again, what do you make of all these foreign TV stations saying um, domestically saying America needs to turn its guns in? Why are they all ganging up on us? Well, because they're controlling the people and they don't want it. They don't want the people to have any freedom. So all these slimy governments are in it together, basically. Well, again, going back to Qatar, these are the people that started. And by the way, there's a link that subscribers get. I was on China Today with the. Al Jazeera Washington bureau chief prior to the Libyan war. 
You got to check this out. We'll put the link up there for everybody. We'll put it on YouTube on the Gerald Salenti or Trends Journal channels. And this is prior to the war. You want to see this easy talking guy lose it at the end. It's a comic book. What, what happened was that the Arab Little League, all of these kings, emirs, dictators by any other name, are the ones that are destabilizing the area and sending all of the arms in that are supporting these Islamist al-Qaeda wackos that the United States, of course, began supporting under Jimmy Carter called the Mujahideen that's overthrowing these governments. So now going back to Al Gore, he just scored a hundred million bucks because his worthless current TV didn't have anybody watching it. When, you know, they had as low as, you know, 40,000 people tuning in. And by the way, that's a political payoff, having foreign governments later pay you for something that's not really worth it. That's the oldest trick in the book. I mean, this exactly. is just, um, look at Congress saying they're allowed to insider trade and then passing a law that actually lets them insider trade, claiming the law outlaws them insider trading. I mean, it is just unbelievable how much trouble we're in. But it's perfect for a piece of crap like Al Gore. He just sold us out and brought Al Jazeera in to do propaganda for us. This is the same slime ball that sold out America and sent out all our jobs overseas with NAFTA. And he's you got the young that. he's got the young turds on there. Uh, that show, uh, Young Turks calling to take our guns. It's all just a bunch of foreign traders. But I mean, again, how much will we put up with? He traded the company, the country out on that debate with Ross Perot back in the early 90s. And people don't understand that Ronald Reagan couldn't put NAFTA, push, push NAFTA through because the Democrats were against it. They knew that labor would lose all its jobs. George Bush Sr. couldn't put NASA, push NAFTA through because the Democrats knew that it would suck out all our jobs. But as long as Al Gore and Clinton did it, it's cute. Democrats love getting destroyed as long as they feel like they're winning and their party's in. They love it. That as long as one of them destroys them, Clinton pulled off what the other ones couldn't. So Al Gore is the perfect metaphor for selling out the country, whether it's selling out our freedom to hear great programming and not be propagandized by the Qatar government that's starting wars throughout the Middle and East. And that's their perfect cutout. And of course, they're connected to British intelligence. I mean, I think it's time to really look at these foreign run TV stations domestically because they're running around trying to overthrow our republic. I mean, what do you call that when foreign governments come in? Because Al Jazeera says turn our guns in. I say Al Jazeera needs to get out of our country. I, and that's what I'm saying, that Al Gore is the same guy that sold out the country, that took our jobs overseas, and now he's grabbing some more dough. So going back to the wars. I tell you what, we got to go to break. I, we'll, we'll come right back, and I promise go to some calls here. Gerald Salente is our guest. It's just unbelievable. Look what you've been missing. The Trends Journal, the only place you get the facts. Current events form future trends. And the truth. That's why I'm a political atheist. And the trends. Fast food, health food restaurants. All in one place. Were your seatbelts fastened for the stock market crash of 87? He predicted the stock market crash of 1987. The major media missed it. But world-class trends forecaster Gerald Salenti predicted the crash months before it happened. In USA Today, Salenti warned the world of a 9-11 scale attack and the panic of 08. You predicted what the dot-com bubble before it happened, the real estate bubble and the crash before it happened. That's right. Investing in gold, when gold was at $275 per ounce, Salente predicted the beginning of the gold bull run. Watch gold. Gold prices could go to the stratosphere. Dr. Salente, the truth surgeon, has been cutting to the bone with 32 years of cutting edge and accurate trend forecasts, unrivaled in his profession, and trenchant in-depth multidisciplinary analysis. We're going to jam.
time and a few phone calls in this next segment and the next. And I'm going into overdrive in the next hour to play some special reports and take more calls. Gerald Salente is our guest. I'm Alex Jones. If you just tuned in. I, I said I would announce two big contests today, but I'm going to shoot a video that will air on the nightly news tonight where I break down the new contest we're going to have. We're going to have... $5,000 contest. We got two $1,000 contests I'm about to pay out on next week. We've had like over 20 contests now over the years. Uh, we're going to have one that's $5,000 that I'll be announcing and another that's $100,000. And the reason I'm doing this is to get the word out and it will reach tens upon tens of millions of people with the message of liberty. Wait till you hear about these contests. It's going to be big. Um, but I've got to codify my thoughts. I haven't written up the rules yet, so I'll announce it tonight in a special video. The next week officially uh, kick it off because uh, we've got to uh, turn loose the power of the people. Um, continuing here, this is everything we're talking about. Globalism is foreign financial interests that are authoritarian coming in and buying off your government and then having the government give the tax money and no bid contracts to them. And then they want to secure that, so now they want our guns too and our freedom. It's just mafia, it's, it's organized crime. That's what the new world order is. And that's what we've become, and now we are such a joke that all these foreign governments are here propagandizing us and paying for CNN and paying for what's on current TV and lecturing us on all these channels that we need to give our guns up, and it's enough, okay? It's enough. Gerald, have they miscalculated here? Or will America just put up with anything? Well, you know, one of the, I, what I'd like to do is come back at a, another time shortly and go over our top trends for 2013. And one of them is the Great Awakening. You know, there was before this revolution in this country, uh, there was a, an awakening. And part of the Great Awakening was that people woke up to the idea that they should not bow to nobility, that they weren't better than the rest of the commoners. It became, it became also something where people realized that their salvation was dependent upon their actions, on how they behaved, what they did, and how they would bring themselves up to the highest level to be the best human beings they could be. A lot of, by the way, Thomas Paine's work is written in the context of the Great Awakening. And there was a religious element to it as well. But forgetting the religious element, I believe we're going to answer your question, we're going to have another Great Awakening. The nobility have become this red carpet crowd. They never show up without a red carpet. Do you know how sick and tired I am of watching Hillary Clinton or somebody, the president, waving from you know their jumbo jets? Who are they waving to? A bunch of prostitutes down below? A bunch of flacky, flunky aides? But yet you see these pictures. No, they're behaving like royalty. It's all, they're saying, I'm God, you're nothing. And by the way, I'm going to take your guns. And by the way, I'm going to take $85 billion a month and put it in my pocket. And if you don't like it, a SWAT team's going to drop by. Exactly. So now the people are going to start rebelling against the royalty. All of the, sh the charade is down. How could any self-respecting human being listen to a McConnell or a Reed or a Pelosi or a Bonner or an Obama or a Laurel and Hardy? That's all it is, and everyone knows it. The, the charade is, is, is coming very clear to many. And then when you go overseas, it's no different. The Great Awakening is beginning to happen. quick calls for Gerald Salente. Uh, I want to invite him back because I want to get his trends uh, for the new year. 
uh, next week if he wants. So the week after that, whenever Gerald wants, uh, he's on. I always love listening to him. So do our listeners. Great information. Really points out the hypocrisy and accurately predicts what's going to come in the future. And I agree with him. People finding their dignity. Everything the globalists do is about dominating us, breaking our will, like a pimp does to a to a, to you know to a woman he's dr drug off into slavery. And we have got to stop letting government dominate us. It's doing it everywhere because it knows what it's doing. Uh, let's go uh, to uh, George in. Connecticut, no, 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 George is at first. John in Wyoming on Feinstein, listening on WWCR. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Alex, and thank you for having your great guest, Gerald Salente, on today. You bet. Uh, I had something happen yesterday that both of you will enjoy. I called Diane Feinstein's office in Washington, D.C., and one of her young male staffers answered the phone. I said, as per the uh, gun control measure Ms. Feinstein is introducing today, I said, please give her my congratulations. I had no idea she was a supporter of the Fuhrer. I said, Adolf Hitler did the same thing to his people in 1934, and then we saw what he did to his people after he disarmed them. So I just wanted to give her a very hearty congratulations for following her, her guide, uh, the Fuhrer. And I said, by the way, if you think that anyone uh, but... Uh, you know, is going to be uh, obeying your gun control edicts. Uh, ask her how many murderers, rapists, armed robbers, drug dealers, or gangbangers are going to turn in their firearms. I said the answer is like her credibility, zero. I said we saw how well the alcohol prohibition worked. We saw how well the drug prohibition has worked. And now you expect different results with the gun prohibition? I said criminals don't obey. And what did the uh, creature on the other end of the line say? He started hollering, what zip code are you calling in from? I said, never mind that. I said, I'm not a constituent, <laughs> but since she introduced this legislation, I thought I would call up. Oh, yeah, they'll also it. imply that if you're not in their state, she's trying to take our rights nationwide. Shut up, Feinstein. You represent everybody. That's the stuff they pull as well. Uh -huh. you, you need to call her and let her know. Thanks for waking everybody up, you Boy. pig witch. I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, Gerald. Oh, bravo. That was perfect. What he said was perfect. You know, not a word minced and not a word wasted. And, and by the way, on the Feinstein issue, I was just talking about Al Gore before. And the deal that they made, you know, to get their station on all their worthless, their worthless current TV on all these cable companies that would never normally carry it. But because of his connections, do you know one of the investors in there? Diane Feinstein's husband. Uh -huh. Isn't that a who, who gets banker bailout money and all the insider trading stuff that, yeah. uh, that mommy's involved in. But she got the, the Senate Ethics Committee to tell her it was okay. So the news said, oh, she's allowed to insider trade, but you go to jail if you do. But she's yeah. better than us. She walks on red carpets. Exactly. And again, that goes back to the Great Awakening. But that caller, that was perfect what he said because it covered all the points Perfectly. Yeah, they, like you said, they're the gangbangers, all these the rapists, the, the robbers, they're going to give up their guns? Hey, Gerald, no. I want to tell people right now, because you've got to leave us, I know, you just offered to come on and break down your trends that we don't have time to get to. Is your book there? Can I tell folks now when you're going to be on for an hour next week? Uh, I don't know the exact date, but uh, uh, but I <laughs> will get it to you later on today. Okay, but just sometime next week, you will grace us with your presence. I promise sometime next week we will make the time to be on. If I have a red carpet for you. Uh, then it could be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Listen, I was joking. I'm going to start having bling and, like, red carpets. Maybe all the... Yeah, uh, all... I want a red carpet when I show up, you know. <laughs> no, and it's true because every time you see these, these dictators, we'll call them presidents or prime ministers, they always have some flunky over there dressed up in a costume, you know, and they're all lined up and they're saluting. Who made this crap up? Who's paying for this? Get these guys to work. They're very what? embarrassing. What? Gerald, thank you so much. More calls and news, special reports coming up. There goes Gerald Salente. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.